19 minutes to settle this, this sermon. The title of my message this morning is Bodybuilding. Say bodybuilding. Who wants to be a bodybuilder? <laughs> Rofia, oh, Rofia. <laughs> they said Rofia wants to be a bodybuilder, right? Um, yes, and uh, we are continuing with our, with our, uh, you know, bodybuilding. We are continuing with our, with our story, with our, the, the analogy that we started last week of moving from the foyer to the couch and to the, and to the, uh, to the kitchen. Amen, and. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so we're, we're trusting that by the end of this series. Why, why are we having this series? We're having this series because we want to invite you to take steps into greater commitment into the work of God. Amen. We want to invite you into taking steps into greater commitment to what God is doing. We want to invite you to take steps into becoming connected to the body of Jesus Christ. We want to invite you to take steps and not just be a person who's standing in the foyer, but become a person who is in the lounge and eventually you move from the lounge and you move to the kitchen. What, we, what did we say? We say on the foyer, it is a very casual space. This is where after church you just have a five minutes conversation with people. It's very casual. You speak about things that have nothing to do with you. You know, you are just, just having a conversation that leads to nowhere. You are not personal in any way. We're just speaking general terms. And this is the foyer. You don't want to let anyone in. You don't want to you know, belong to anything, you are not in small groups, you are not in anything, you just come to church on Sunday and then you leave and, 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 and this is the foyer. And we don't want people to just be on the foyer because while it is convenient, it is lonely. While it is convenient, it is disconnected. While it is convenient, while it might feel safe, it is actually not safe. That, that, that safety that you feel by being alone when you are in the foyer, when you are going through stuff, that safety now becomes isolation. So we want people to move from the foyer and move to the couch. And what is the couch? The couch is a place where you are connected. So the, there it is about convenience, and on the couch is a place where you are connected, where you don't just come to church on Sunday, and then you just pack and then you leave. But here, you are connected with people. This is where you have lunches during the week, you have coffees, you know, connected with people. You are in small groups, you have joined a small group and everything. And while that, it, is, it feels safe, but it is shallow, this one here is, is you feel supported. You cannot re receive support while you are on the foyer. On the foyer, this is where your mom, your dad dies, and after a month you say, I'm leaving that church because when my dad died, they didn't support me. And we're like, we didn't even know that you have a dad. We didn't even know because everything about this is shallow. Everything about this is just on the surface. But when you move to the lounge, when you move to the couch, here we begin to share. And this one is exposing, but you feel deeply connected. This one helps you grow. That one is shallow, but you, deeply, you feel deeply disconnected. This one, you feel deeply connected. Here you feel a sense of support. Then we don't want you to stay here because now if you stay here, then you turn into a crybaby, right? Because now every time you have problems, we have to sit down and cancel you, cancel you. I get tired of canceling you. I'm like, really? Come on, man. How many sessions must I have with you, right? Okay, I'm just kidding, man. I can have, I can have five sessions with you. That's it. Anyway, uh, yeah. So, so this, this is, but, but if. You stay here and never transition there. It's either I'm a bad pastor or you're a bad follower. Something between this is not working. Because if, if, if I'm really doing my job and it is making a difference in your life, you need to move from the, from the couch to the kitchen. What is the kitchen? The kitchen is where we contribute. Remember there, it's about convenience, here's about connection, here's about contribution. Where you come into the church and say, what can I do? Where you are no longer satisfied with just sitting and doing nothing, but you want to do something. When you come to a church, when you see the numbers, you go like, listen, I want to contribute to that number. When next month, when they say the, the budget now, the, 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 we have reached 100,000, I want to say, I'm part of it. 
My, my 5,000 is in there. Yeah. My 200 is in there. My two rands is in there. That's when we are here. Here is when you say, when we talk about, when you, when you see the speakers up, you are like, up, 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 put those speakers up. The tables that are here, you are contributing to making church happen. You are contributing to making the community happen. It is a sense of maturity. You understand. When you are here, you understand that you cannot sit down and do nothing anymore. It takes effort and contribution to make this thing work. When we grow from there to here, we, we are now in a sense of contribution. And here, while there, it's a sense of it's very shallow. Here, you feel supported. Here, you get a sense of significance because suddenly you feel like your life means something. You're making a difference in other people's lives. Guys, if it's been years and you come to church and you are not touching anyone, you're not making a difference to your community, you need to start assessing yourself. You say, I've been in this church for a year and all I do is come here and leave. That can't be right. I think just as a human being, you must just go like, it's like, you know, there's a guy who's in the church right now. He's a friend of mine. So he, he says the reason why he doesn't come to church a lot is because I always preach about him. But now, <laughs> yeah, so I'm, gonna, I'm not going to mention his name, right? Yeah, let's not. Let, let me just make him uncomfortable today. So we've been friends for a long time, right? It, it's, it will be weird if he comes to my house, we eat, we do anything, and, and he doesn't even help me wash the dish. If, if you come to my house, I wouldn't expect you to do anything. But if he comes to my house, our relationship is at a point where I'm like, dude, you must wash the dishes. You can't just eat and just leave everything lying around, right? So when he comes to my, when I, okay, when I go to his house, I cook. When he comes to my house, he brings takeaway because, uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, but he doesn't, he comes, he understands that, no, I'm not going there as just a visitor to consume. If he does, he can't cook. He brings something because our relationship has matured to that level. If you were to visit my home, I would not expect that from you. So there are people in this church who are not contributors and it's okay. You are still new. Your time is ticking. <laughs> yeah. We're giving you we're giving you about what? Uma two months so yeah, yeah. We're giving you my two months. After that we need to start seeing some action. Right? I'm not I'm joking. I mean we don't have a cut off, it's not two months, it's one month. Anyway, it's not. It's, we, we don't have we don't have we don't have a time limit, but but there is a can I tell you? Let, let me be honest with you, there is an expectation that you will come on board and we do this together. There's an expectation that everyone who's sitting here will move from the foyer to the lounge and to the, and to the kitchen. Now we're talking about bodybuilding, building the body of, building the body of Christ. Um, uh, there's this guy, Ronnie Coleman, he's a bodybuilder. He says, everyone wants to be a bodybuilder, but nobody wants to lift the heavy weights. Have you realized that everyone wants to be in a healthy church? But not everyone is willing to contribute to a healthy church. Everyone wants to be in a healthy church. Everyone wants to be in an excellent church. Everyone wants to be in a church that serves people. Everyone wants to be in a church that makes a difference in the community. Everyone wants to be in a church that gets people saved. Everyone wants to be in a church that grows. Everyone wants to be in a church where the sound is like, oh man, the sound is great, right? Everyone wants to be in a church where there's nice worship. Everyone wants to be in a church where the, when the pastor preaches, you don't hear feedback and all these things. Everyone wants to be in that kind of church. But not everyone wants to contribute to making it happen. Not everyone wants to contribute to what, making it happen. And we're like, but then who must? Who must make, who must create this life-giving, with life-giving church, right? Everyone wants to be in a healthy community, but not everyone wants to do what it takes to build it. 
Not everyone wants to do what it takes to build it. When we look at it, when we want an example of a life-giving church is the church in X2, right? The church in X2 gives us a picture of what a life-giving church, what it takes to build a life-giving church. If you want to know what, what it takes to build a life-giving church, just read X2 from 42. The Bible says this is what it takes to build a life-giving church. It says... This is now Acts 2, 42. It says, all believers were devoted, to the, devoted themselves to the teaching of the apostles, to the fellowship, to the sharing of meals, and to prayer. They worshipped together in the temple each day, met in their homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy and generosity. In just those two uh, verses, we are able to pick up what it takes to build a life-giving church. The Bible says, all believers were devoted. A life-giving church is built by all believers, devoted believers. It's not built by a great worship team. A life-giving church is not built by a great preacher. A life-giving church is not built by a great band. A life-giving church is built when all believers are devoted, when everyone is playing their part. The time where we have head figures in the church, the pastor being the guy who walks around like he's the man of the hour is over. It requires all believers to be devoted. The Bible says all believers were devoted. And what is devotion? Devotion is a deep love. Devotion is loyalty. Devotion is profound commitment. All believers, there was no one who was special. There was no one who was too special to meet in small groups. There was no one who was too special to do anything. All believers. Yeah. There was no one who says, you know me, my personality does not allow me. <laughs> yeah, you see me, I'm, I'm shy, so I don't want to. Find shy people and belong to them, right? <laughs> they, are, they, are, they are here, right? So, so after church, just look for one who's standing awkward at the corner, like, that one is mine. And then you go to them. And you guys can just stand next to each other. I'm sure you'll understand the language. You're like, and you're just quiet. And you are in deep conversation. And then, and then when you're done, you're like, it was great, man. If that's your thing, it's fine. Just get connected. We, we, we're not, the, the thing is sometimes we think being connected to the church means being extroverted and being on top of the couch and dense. No. Find the people that you vibe with. They are there, there's, there's everyone for everyone. Right? But the, the, the point is all. Everyone was devoted. You see, can I? Can I show you how simple this thing is? There's about a hundred of us here, right? And, and, and I'm not, I'm, I just want to show you what happens. So there's, there's a target of a hundred thousand that we want to reach monthly. If everyone makes a commitment to give a thousand rands a month, we reach our target. It then takes off the burden from someone who, has, who feels like they have to give 10,000 rands. Because everyone is involved. I'm not saying the one who ties 5,000, they must go and tithe like 100 rands because now, no, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying to you, if everyone is involved, then the burden is divided. Yeah. 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 Then the burden is divided. There are people, guys, who come here every morning on Sunday at 6.30 to come and set this thing up. You know what is my wish? My wish is that they will do that only once a month. Because there's enough people to rotate, they don't have to do it every week. At the current moment, Kutle has been pegging this chairs for the past, since the beginning of the year. Every Sunday he's here, he's doing it. We need someone else to relieve him. To say, you know what, next week I'll do it. And then someone else takes another week, and then someone else takes another week. Suddenly, because Kutle is going to end up feeling like the church is a burden to him. He's going to feel bent out by the church and say, man, I'm so, every Sunday is me. Every Sunday is me. Then next week, Sunday, we come here. We're like, how, oh, guys? Why are the chairs skewed? We're like, no, Kutle didn't pitch. He was burnt out because not everyone was involved. But when everyone is involved, then Kutle can do it once a month. When everyone is involved, 
Then, you see, the, the, the beautiful thing about the worship team is that these guys, there's like so many of them, that they are rotating. None of them do it every Sunday. Because when everyone is involved, then the burden is light. That's why the Bible says everyone was, was devoted. What was everyone devoted to? Number one, everyone was devoted to the reading of the scripture. Everyone. No one waited for the pastor to come and open the scripture on Sunday. Everyone spent time with the word. Why? Because when we spend time with the word, our lives are shaped by the word. Now we build a healthy community because now all of a sudden we are not living our truth. We are, everyone is living the same truth. When we are not reading the Bible, then everyone has their own truth in the church. And that's how we begin to hurt each other. But if we are all following the same truth, we are all devoted to the same truth, then we are able to build a healthy community. Number two, the Bible says, and they, 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 they devoted themselves to fellowship and to the sharing of meals. I'm going to say this again, guys. Please go out to lunch. Like, invite each other for coffees. <laughs> right, guys? And, and, and please, when you go for lunch, sometimes pay the bill. You can't just always be the one who, who has forgotten their wallet at home. <laughs> invite, invite people out. They, everyone devoted to fellowship, to spending time. What is fellowship? It's spending time. Don't, because I can tell you this, if you don't initiate fellowship, you are going to end up feeling alone. If all of us are waiting to be seen, all of us are waiting to be asked out. And here is what I want to show you. When you are here, you are motivated by a need for attention. When you are here, you want to be seen. You get offended when you are not greeted. Because here, who must see you? When, when you spend time when you are here at the foyer, you spend more time in choosing your outfit than praying about your giving. Yeah, you come to church, you have taken time, you put all your outfits there, you choose, an hour passes. You didn't even spend a moment saying, God, I'm going to your house. What should I give? Because you're not coming with a mindset to contribute. Am I, am I, am I offending someone? Good. When we are here, you know, the people that are on the foyer, they know everything that is wrong in the church. Because if you are busy in the kitchen, you don't have time to be noticing everything that is not going right because you are busy fixing something. But because you are in the foyer with your red mark, you said the sound was this, the pastor was this, the worship was this. And he said the worship was not great today. We were not worshiping you. <laughs> that is what's happening when we are here. When we are in the foyer, we see everything that's wrong. And we are motivated by a need for attention. The pastor must greet me. The sister must say hi to me. You even know my tone. You're like, no, today's tone was not right. The way he greeted me, I didn't like it. No, the pastor didn't say thank you to me. No, the pastor didn't say this and that. Like, here, the motivation is attention. When we are here, we are motivated by a sense of accountability. We want to be held accountable. And guys, let me show you. Ne? If these things I saw, the Bible, let me, no, it's fine. The church, the church, the, the X2 church starts here. All people gather. In, now people gather from, the, from, the, from Rome. Some come from Rome. Some come from Palestine. They meet in Jerusalem. And the Bible says in X6, it says, then there was a quarrel amongst them about the division of food because now I get it there are new people that are coming into the circle 
They are not matured. They start fighting over food. That's what happened when we stay here too long. We start bickering around small things. Because they were new to this church, this, this X2 church. In X6, they start complaining. No, I didn't get enough food. No, I didn't get enough attention. No, I didn't get enough prayer. No, the pastor has not visited me. Oh, no, the sister has not done this. Ah, rah, 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 rah. Because there's still a sense of immaturity. It's a new church. Those, listen, guys, let me tell you. Me, the mess of the church does not bother me at all. You know why it doesn't bother me? I'm expecting it. Church is a messy place. What bothers me is people staying in the same mess. I know that there's gossipers here. That doesn't bother me. I know there's fornicators here. That doesn't bother me. I know there's adulterers here. I, that's not, that's, that doesn't surprise me, guys. There's nothing you're going to do that I'm going to... Oh. I'm not going to see you at a yep yep smoking hardly and get shocked. No, I'm not. I'm not silly. I know these things happen. Hey, listen. I'm not going to see you holding a girlfriend and then I see him like, but that's not your wife and get shocked. No, I'm not going to get shocked. I'm not going to get shocked. But I sure as hell hope that we can grow from that where you are matured and you live that lifestyle. As a church, we must grow. And that growth happens when we take accountability. Most of us, we don't want to move from the foyer to the couch because there, there's accountability. That's why we love online church because in online church, no one is going to call you out for your bad behavior. <laughs> We're like, oh, it's nice in the foyer. No, it's not nice. You are running away from accountability. Here yeah, I'm going to sit down with you and say, Kutle, but that woman was not, is not your wife that I saw you with. What's up, bruh? Zimasa, I didn't see him with anyone. I'm just, yeah. Before, before, <laughs> before he gets home and then they're like, Umfundis vega teta gantoni? I don't, yeah. <laughs> because guys, here, there is accountability. That's why the Bible says in, I'm rushing, I'm rushing through the sermon like, Phew. right? That's why, that's why the Bible says in, in James 5 verses 16 says, therefore confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. Pray, the a prayer of a righteous person has great power as it works. Guys, healing is there here. There's no healing there. Come through, bruh. Come through. Let's sit down and tell me, man, me, I love women. Let's talk through that. Come sit down. Me, I, I'm, I'm a porn addict. Let's sit down and talk through it. I'm not going to judge you, but, man, I'm going to hold you accountable. Yeah. I'm going to say, brother, don't worry, man. We are in this together, but we need to step out of this. Yes. Yes. Don't, listen, guys, can I liberate you? There's nothing you're going to tell me that's going to shock me. I'm not looking at you and, and, and assuming that you are an angel, no. I know that we are all here only because of the grace of God. I, you are not going to come and say to me, listen, man, you know, I have two girlfriends and I go like, I'm going to go like, okay, bro, let's show me, show me pictures. <laughs> I want to see what it how. Wait. And I go like, ah, this one. Uh. <laughs> and when we are done talking, and I say, okay, bro, listen, you are a child of God. God has put something in you that is so powerful. God has put destiny inside of you. God has, God has put life inside of you. This is not who you are. Let's help you out of it. Let's walk a journey out of it. You are going to beat this and we're going to help you through it. We're going to walk this journey with you. That doesn't happen there. It only happens here where there's accountability. Here you're going to feel exposed. But here there's accountability. Here there's accountability. And, and, and I hope I've liberated you guys. 
I'm under no illusions as I'm standing here. I know there was a time where I was coming to church while fornicating. It happens. Going to church while you are lying, it happens. I am glad you came. Man, I'm glad you came. With your brokenness, I'm glad you came. With your mess, I am glad you saw it fit that you come. With a broken life, I am glad you came, man. With whatever is happening in your life, I am. I thank God you came. And please keep coming. If you fall this week, come next week. If you fall the week later, come. Keep on coming. We are going to win this together. Together we are going to beat this thing that is tormenting you. Together we are going to make you stand. You are going to stand. We are going to do it together on the couch. Keep coming. Keep coming, man. Keep coming and you get in your car and you smoke your cigarette. Come next week. Keep coming. Keep coming. We're not going to get tired. Keep coming. We're going to beat that addiction together. We're going to beat that brokenness together. We are going... We are going to beat it together, but we cannot beat it together while you are standing on the foyer when we don't know. We don't know. Come through, bruh. There's nothing you're going to say to me that's going to shock me. Come through. Let's sit on the couch. Let's have a conversation. Let's hold each other accountable. Part of why we are sharing those numbers is because I want you guys to hold us accountable. This church must hold us accountable and say, Muruti, wait. We have been pledging for, 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 for a year. And the last time we checked, we were on 500,000. But we are still here. And we see you have bought a new Mercedes Benz. What's up? You must hold me accountable. If I don't want to be held accountable, leave this church. I am, I'm making the statement, guys. The day I don't want to be held accountable, you must know that it's a day where Jesus Christ is no longer Lord in this church. Leave. Leave. We beat it here. And when we're done beating it here, my sister, we take you to the kitchen. Here, we're motivated by action. Here, we're motivated by action. We are action people. The Bible says we are not saved by good works, but we are saved unto good works. We are saved unto good works. When we get saved, there's an activation of the ability to do good works. We are able to do good works. We want you to move from seeking attention to, to seeking accountability and taking action. At the end of the year, Daddy, we want you in the kitchen. Palisa, at the end of the year, we need you in the kitchen. It's not only that we want you in the kitchen, we need you in the kitchen. Because there are ladies who are struggling with porn, but they are in the foyer. And you are able, when you are in the kitchen, to walk a journey with them. If we are all in the foyer, we are all looking good, and we are all trying to get attention, no one is getting help. All we are doing is looking good, then no one is getting help. Yeah. But if we all come to the couch and there's no one in the kitchen, who's helping these people? Who's caring for these people? Who's loving these people? Who is serving these people? There must be someone in the kitchen. There are people in the church that says, when I was going through depression, through depression, no one was there for me because there was no one in the kitchen. Psychologists, you are here, come to the kitchen. People need help. Doctors, you are here, man, come to the kitchen. People need help. Lawyers, you are here, come to the kitchen. People need help. Engineers, all kinds of people, you are here. Come to the kitchen. People need help. There's people that are in difficult situations here. You are sitting with the gift. People need help. I can't do it all. Someone is going to come and say, Murudi, I'm struggling with one, two, three. 
and the best I do is I open a scripture and I encourage them. They say, listen, I was forcefully accused of this and that and that. And I open a scripture and says, your accuser will be under your feet. Uh -uh. I need Busi to step in and say, Busi, come. This person was forcefully accused. What do we do? Am I making sense? That's why the people in Jesus' crew, some are text collectors and that, all kinds of things. Why? Because it, it's, it's, it's practical solutions. And practical solutions are very spiritual, by the way. <laughs> because you think, Ori, being spiritual is only praying for depression. Sitting at the couch and having a conversation is also a deeply spiritual transaction. Amen. Because sometimes we want a monopoly on things. We think, no, if you go to a psychologist, you are not spiritual enough. Says who? That psychologist is spirit-filled, stone-tacking, saved and anointed. Yes. Stop it with the monopoly that you feel like you are the only one who has access to heaven. <laughs> but we need you, Mashudu, in the kitchen, bruh. This church is growing at a rapid pace. We need people in the kitchen. Just God, God said to us in the beginning of the year, as I close, He said, prepare yourself for tomorrow. I'll do a great miracle among you. And we're seeing the miracle unfolding. We're seeing the miracle is unfolding. We don't have enough people in the kitchen. We don't have enough people caring for others. We don't have enough people serving on Sunday. We don't have enough people giving so that we can be able to get a bigger space. We don't have enough people asking people to go and have a conversation. We don't have enough people facilitating conversations. We don't have enough people. guys. I don't have a Messiah complex. I don't think I can save all of, one, all of you. I'm actually here to empower you so that you can serve the people here. Yes. It's not my job to save everyone here. It is to empower you to do the work of ministry. That's what the Bible says. Some are apostles, some are evangelists, some are this, some are this. You are equipped people to do the work of ministry. I am here to equip you to do the work of ministry. To get all of you in the kitchen where we take action. There's QR codes outside. And also on those QR codes, there's a link that, has, that says, I want to serve. All it takes is your cell phone, and you scan the QR code, and then you click, I want to serve, and register there. We'll find a spot for you. We'll find a spot for you. There are people that are standing here not because they like attention. They are so broken that they don't know that they can go to the couch. There are people in our church that are sitting on the couch. They are sitting alone because there's not enough of us to cater to them. Because in the kitchen, we have only a few people. We need you there. We need you there. Father, thank you that you are building your church and you're building it through us. We dedicate ourselves this morning we say, here we are, like the prophet Isaiah said, here we are, send us. Here we are, send us. Here we are, send us. We are ready to be used by you. We are ready to be used by you. 
build your church through us. Let me read the scripture for you and then I'll close. 1 Peter 2, in the message translation, the Bible says, 1, 2, 3. So clean house. Say clean house. Yes. We are cleaning house. We're no longer going to be the Christians who are complaining about the church. We're going to build the church we know God wants. Amen. We're going to build the church we know God wants. It says clean house. Make a clean sweep of all malice, pretense, envy, and hateful talk. You have tasted, you have had a taste of God. Now, like infants at the breast, drink deep of God's pure kindness. Then you will grow up, you, then you will grow up mature and whole in God. Welcome to the living stone. When we are here, we have come to the living stone. Welcome to the living stone. May Musa Church be a living stone experience to you because you are encountering Jesus. Welcome to the living stone. The Bible says, welcome to the living stone, the source of life. The workman took one look and threw it out. God set it in a place of honor. Present yourself as building stones for the construction of a century vibrant with life. We are building stones. And Peter is challenging every one of us. Present yourself as a living stone for the building of a vibrant sanctuary. All of us sitting here, we build a vibrant sanctuary for the Lord. Present yourself. Present yourself. Present yourself. Amen. Let's give God a hand of praise.